just as we will do a pre-analysis before we get into the tool, we will also do a verification and validation before we get out of the tool. Verification and validation is a systematic process for checking results. It's become very important as companies are trying to do more and more with computer simulations and as they want to minimize, if not eliminate, physical testing. Now, there are whole conferences devoted to the topic. To think through what we need to do in verification validation, let's go back to the framework of what's under the black box. Let's consider verification first. In verification, I look at did I solve the model right, i.e., whatever mathematical model I picked, did I solve it right? So it's looking at errors introduced in these steps of the simulation. And there are three categories of checks that one can do. The first is to check if the results are consistent with the mathematical model. So for, for instance, you know, that the color pictures are consistent, you know, results in the color pictures are consistent with the mathematical model. Um, the, the behavior at the boundaries, is it consistent with the boundary conditions in the mathematical model? The physical principles in the mathematical model, say equilibrium in, um, in a structural case, so you check in your results if the, the, the structure is you know, in equilibrium to a reasonable level. In a fluid mechanics problem, the physical principle might be conservation of momentum, and so you're checking if you know, momentum is conserved in your results, and so on. The second category of checks is deals with whether the level of numerical errors is acceptable. So the errors introduced by the tool, as it solves the mathematical model numerically, um, whether those um, numerical errors are acceptable. And for instance, this is where you know, one would check um, if you know, what's the dependence on the mesh. And that's something that um, students get intuitively, but you know, we, we need, to do, need to do other checks in this category too. The third category of checks is looking at whether we are getting a reasonable comparison with hand calculations. So it's looking whether the results are you know, comparable to your expectations from hand calculations. You can see that there is judgment involved, right? Engineering judgment involved. What is acceptable? What is reasonable? And so on. And that's something you will get as you um, get more, you know, as you get more experience. But one can get into this habit of, of checking these things right off the bat. And that's what we're going to do. Let's talk about validation next. In validation, I'm looking at did I solve the right model? And contrast that to verification where I'm looking at did I solve the model right. In validation, I'm checking if the mathematical model that I replace my physical problem with, is that even a reasonable representation of the physical problem? For instance, you know, there are assumptions embedded in the mathematical model. Are they acceptable or have I missed out some important, you know, aspect of it? Or have I oversimplified the problem? and so on. And this is where one checks against experimental data. So when one is checking experimental data, one is doing validation rather than verification. Because in the experiments, you're not using a mathematical model. You're interrogating the physical setup um, directly. So before we get, you know, at the end of each case study, we will do verification validation and go through these series of checks.